international track star Steve Prefontaine once said, most people run a race to see who's fastest. I run a race to see who has the most guts. My husband William knows a thing or two about guts. He's a legally blind long distance runner. Will started running about 10 years ago as a hobby. Then he began entering races, 5Ks, 10Ks, and eventually marathons. In 2012, Will qualified to run the Boston Marathon, the oldest and most prestigious in the US. In preparing for this run, Will contacted Team with a Vision, a running initiative for the visually impaired in Massachusetts. To our surprise, Team with a Vision hooked Will up with a celebrity sighted guide to run with him, Peter Sagal, the host of NPR's game show, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. I got the chance to sit down with Will and Peter before the big day and ask them a couple of questions. It. Okay, so why do you do it? Is it the fame, the fortune, the oh, yeah. groupies? I've made, I've made oh <laughs> gosh, tens of dollars. <laughs> no, uh, well, you know, that's a good question. Everybody asks uh, why you do it. William, it's harder for you. I can see. <laughs> well, I do that. I do it to do it, to run the 26 miles. Um, one of the peculiar things about marathon running is that neither William or I will win this race tomorrow. I assume, maybe you could, you could place in the visually impaired. What do you think? There are some really fast, really fast runners. I'm hearing like under three hours. Well, and so let me say this with some, we're not gonna win the visually <laughs> impaired. But, um, so you do this, and I'm never gonna win anything. So you do this not to succeed or beat somebody else, but really just to test yourself. What does a sighted guide do exactly, and why didn't you have sighted guides during your previous six marathons? The sighted guides do two things. I tell you where things are on the course, if you need to turn left or turn right, let you know when that's coming up, and also alert you about obstacles in the course. I haven't used a sighted guide before because the first time I tried to run a marathon, I was aiming for a nine minute mile and the only one who was willing to be a sighted guide was running at a 10 minute mile. So you couldn't find anyone fast enough couldn't to run with you? Couldn't find anyone fast enough. I did San Francisco without a sighted guide, was able to find it, follow the course without too much trouble just by following the crowd, but I thought, well, I'm coming to Boston. I was a little bit nervous in San Francisco. Let's get a sighted guide because I want to concentrate on running the course, not on Am I sure I'm on the right path? Yeah, it's also good to make sure that we won't get separated by crowds, or at least as little as possible. Well, we're supposed to be within, I think, 20 inches of each other, so we'll, you know, Shouldn't and I'll have a big thing that says guide, and you'll have a thing that says blind runner, so hopefully people will give us a break. William, as a sighted guide, what would you strongly urge uh, Peter not to do? <laughs> well, it won't what help me you if you point to an obstacle and say, look out for that. Because. Uh, <laughs> If you could see it, there wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Peter, you've never been a sighted guide before. Never once. Uh, what inspired you to do this this time? Well, they asked. Oh, wow. Uh, it, it was a confluence of, uh, of very happy events. Uh, mm -hmm. For one thing, I had wanted to do the marathon this year and hadn't, frankly, done enough planning to, to enter. And then it just so happens that this earlier this year, I ran a very silly race for charity. A, underwear run for about a mile in the streets of St. Louis around Valentine's Day and I raised about $4,000 for a charity and I found it so fun and weirdly fulfilling that uh, I had a chance to, you know, for the, of the thousands of miles I've run, I finally ran one for somebody else. And so when they asked me, when Team of the Vision asked me to do it, it just seemed like a perfect way to extend that experience. Uh, Peter, as a sighted guide for the Boston Marathon, you have a unique responsibility to alert Will when feral lobsters may yeah. suddenly rush well, across the road during the race. Well, this got out, and I'm really, I'm really unhappy about this because, A, a marathon is a long time, and uh, it, you're out there for a while. We're going to be together, you know, and so I feel a need. I'm an entertainer to entertain him, so my plan was uh, to simply make stuff up for the entire race. And apparently I leaked that to an Austin TV station, so now he knows. So I'll have to be more subtle about it. So if you happen to see anything unusual, like, you know, a herd of lobsters actually cross the then road, Then he won't believe really me. Gonna it's gonna be, isn't that going to be awful? That's going to be tough. I mean, if tough. that happens tomorrow, if something, it's actually true. If something really bizarre happens tomorrow, you probably won't believe me. <laughs> so. Something out of the ordinary did happen. The bombs exploded only a few minutes after Will and Peter crossed the finish line. On April 16th, the day after the marathon, Will and I turned our camera back on to document what had happened. It was a beautiful day. The streets were filled with really happy people. Lots of enthusiasm, lots of support from the crowds. I was moving at a really good pace for 
most of the race. I was right at the barricade, and Will and Peter Sagal went flying by, and they looked pretty good. They looked like they were doing doing well. I felt really triumphant when I picked up the medal. That felt really, really good. Did either one of you have any sense at that point that anything unusual was about to happen once you crossed the finish line? When we were walking to get the medal, or maybe it was after we picked up the medal, we heard a loud boom. After I heard the explosions, I still didn't realize anything was wrong. Then shortly after that, we heard a second boom. I thought they were fireworks or, you know, little cannons going off to celebrate people crossing the finish line. And then I noticed that a lot of people had cell phones and I smelled smoke. And then I saw the most terrifying thing, which was one ambulance after another ambulance after another ambulance after another ambulance shooting down Boylston Street towards the finish line. And there were suddenly, there were police everywhere. One of the scariest things that I saw when I realized how bad things were was when we were walking to the subway and I saw a police officer with an assault rifle. Did policemen come in and tell you anything or do anything? No police officers gave us any information. No one told us anything. They said that something was going on, but nobody really knew what it was. The only news we could get was off of the internet from cell phones. First we heard there were two, then we heard there were three, then we heard there were four explosions, then we heard there were two explosions and two suspicious devices. We did not start to get more definitive answers until much later on in the evening, but some officials contacted Josh Warren, who is the person leading Team with the Vision, and told him that the runners who hadn't completed the course could not, and he had to go and find a way to get in touch with them. And I didn't know where you were. Nobody knew where you were. There were several other people who were supposed to meet us that could not be found. And everyone was trying to track people down. I didn't have my cell phone, so I couldn't call you. I had one person call your cell phone, one person text you, one person called my cell phone number. My cell phone was useless. I couldn't get through to anybody. I couldn't get email. I couldn't get text messages. I couldn't call out and have a call successfully go through to anyone. After about an hour, you found your way close to us and someone from Team with the Vision was calling out your name. I was walking over the family and friends area when Josh yelled out my name as loud as he could and I saw him and then I saw you and I just, you know, opened my arms and uh, ran towards you. I was so happy to see you. I can't tell you because I know that whatever had happened had happened just after you guys had crossed the finish line. Are you, can, would you consider coming back and running this marathon again in the future? There's no question about that. That is going to happen. Because if I don't, that means the, the people who did this horrible act will have beaten the marathon and have beaten the people. Mm -hmm.